So you do not want to bet against Tesla stock unless one, you like losing bets or two, you like losing money, which if you like any of those activities, there's a place called a casino, right? Now, I know some people treat the stock market like a casino, but let's go ahead and talk about Tesla stock because we have multiple people saying that they see Tesla stock at around $1,500 per share within the next decade. Now, Tesla stock is, you know, trading around the $200 level. So that's 7x your money, right? So that's a big return on your money when it comes to Tesla stock. Now, you know, we've had Kathy Wood say this, right? Saying that she sees Tesla stock within, you know, by 2030 at around that price level. However, some individuals are like, hmm, well, Kathy Wood, you know, she had a bad 2022. I don't know if I want to follow her. However, you know, one thing you have to look into, when, especially when it comes to Kathy Wood, is just average rate of return within a longer time horizon, right? Now, I'm not going to go ahead and break that down because I want to go ahead and talk about how we have a billionaire, right? believing or stating that he sees Tesla stock at you know around $1,500 per share and it's one of his biggest holdings in his investments. So I wanna go ahead and break this down. So we have Ron Barron who is a billionaire portfolio manager coming out of the shadow saying, well, I'm thinking, you know, $1,500 per share by 2030, right? Now, keep in mind, a majority of his stake is in Tesla. So this is really the literal term of put your money where your mouth is, right? So now we have multiple people, you know, Kathy Wood, we have Ron Barron coming out and saying, I see Tesla at this high price level by 2030. Now on this channel, keep in mind, guys, I say you should never trade or invest based on anyone else's, you know, opinion, whatever they think but at the same time you kind of have to start to think to yourselves well you know if these people who are much much more wealthier keep in mind ron barron makes an annual return of 20 percent year over year if they're saying you know they see tesla at this level you shouldn't just blindly you know invest and trade in tesla yeah but you should kind of have a little bit more conviction well why are these people saying this right and this is why we have to look into what's going on with tesla what's the story with tesla why is it fundamentally super strong at this current time and moment now one of the things i've said on this channel before which by the way if you're not subscribed consider subscribing is that Tesla right has amazing pricing power right this is because they have a large profit margin on their vehicles that no other you know auto legacy company has when it comes to this EV space right and this is why Tesla could play around with the prices they slash their prices to you know increase demand during a recession and guess what as you know demand came in Tesla realized hey you know we could actually raise prices up again and this is why we saw just recently the Model Y prices are back up again now with this vertical integration and pricing power this is what allows Tesla to really be ahead of the curve, right? This is why Tesla could really dominate the space even in a recession. Now, we have a lot of economists, you know, debating, are we in a recession? Are we heading in a recession? Is it going to be a soft landing? And you know what? Regardless of what it may be, Tesla is still going to dominate the space. And even if Tesla's, you know, stock does come down a little bit, you guys know that I invest long-term in Tesla. I have exposure to it in my long-term portfolio, but I also trade. And so if Tesla comes down, you know, maybe I'll just get some puts to offset, you know, the losses from the long-term portfolio, but that's just a short term thing. We have to look at the long term horizon, which is what you should be doing, especially if you're investing long term. Now for the traders, of course, if there is some volatility in the market, that's going to provide some opportunity. We have to remember that. However, with that being said, I want to go ahead and hop into my computer and show you guys a few more things that you definitely want to pay attention to when it comes to looking into Tesla stock. Alrighty, so we're officially on my laptop. We're looking at Tesla from a weekly time frame. Now real quick, I want to go ahead and highlight some things on a Tesla technical aspect but then I want to go quickly right back to a fundamental look into things I want to talk about some catalyst events and then I also want to look into some macroeconomic data right because at the end of the day when it comes to trading when it comes to investing you have to look at several data points if you have someone just looking at the chart and just pointing at one data point, you should absolutely run because there's so many different variables that could influence the price of a stock, right? So with that being said, you know, we're seeing Tesla. Tesla's have been having a massive run up after it's been selling off. It had a bad 2022. Um, and of course, the overall market had a bad 2022. That's when the federal fund rate started getting hiked. And of course, everyone was just kind of exiting the market. It was a risk off in you know time, right? So one thing I do want to highlight from a technical standpoint is the volume 
profile. So that's this right over here. So one thing I want to point out is that we're currently around this 200 and like kind of like if you look at it just barely around like 207 kind of around this area right over here. And what you are going to see is that volume relative to price, which is completely different from, you know, volume relative to time, right? Volume relative to price. What we're seeing is that there's actually low volume around this area of two, you know, 30 all the way up, right? So what does that mean? Well, that means that once a stock heads around these low volume relative to price areas, the stock can fly up or down relative, you know, on the buying or selling strength, which is why, you know, when we were coming up that area, you know, we rallied up and as we came down, we fell down hard. Just as you see over here around like the $70 area, of course, this is, you know, post split, we see that that's when the stock you know ran up the most because there's less volume so as long as there's vol you know buying pressure you know the stock can really just fly through the order book and then push up on price and that's also the reason why when you look at you know let, let's look into the after hours right for the small time period we're looking at a five minute chart we see tesla's falling down however i don't pay attention to what happens in the after hours because you know again in the after hours there's less volume and less liquidity right so if someone's selling if someone with enough money or just a few people with enough money are selling well that could easily push the stock down however once the market opens back to you know regular trading hours well guess what that's when the real volume kicks in and that's when we see prices kind of go back to either going up or going down which is why you should always you know not really put too much emphasis on after hours but going back to that weekly time chart or that weekly time frame um, one thing you can see, like I just pointed out, is that we're at this area where, yeah, there's going to be some, you know, volume relative to strength. So we're probably going to see either Tesla consolidate or see a little bit of resistance over here. And it makes sense because there was resistance around this area, right? There was some consolidation. And then if we kind of see, we see that around over here as well, which is why we have to pay attention to what Tesla is going to do around this area over here. If we're just looking at the technicals, if we're just looking at the charts, because if we see Tesla break above, you know, around like 230 and there is still buying pressure, well, we could just fly up to the $400 level, which would be absolutely great. However, if we, you know, do come into some resistance, well, we have to pay attention to see is Tesla going to hold up around this $180 range, right? Now, that's just the technicals. Again, I don't try to put too much of an emphasis on technicals, even when it comes to trading. I like to look at several other data points, right? And so I want to go ahead and highlight something. So, you know, we talked about how Tesla has pricing power. Well, we're kind of seeing a little bit of a price war, right? Because, you know, Tesla did, you know, lower their prices, but then they raked up their uh, or hiked up their Model Y prices up again recently. But we see that Ford slashed prices on their Mustang Mach-E, right? And so why is this important? Well, this is, you know, important because we're seeing competitors like Ford try to, you know, leverage pricing power as well. However, they do not have the same pricing power as Tesla. Now, how do we know this? Well, just just a couple of months back, right in March, well, I guess a year ago, right? Ford mentioned how they're trying to, you know, go into a 10% operating profit by 2026. Guys, look at this, 10%, right? By 2026, Tesla is already currently at 20%. So this is something Ford's trying to do within the next like three years. They're not even halfway of what Tesla's doing now. And this is funny because during the recent earnings call for Ford, someone asked, you know, the CEO, they mentioned, do you think you can sell a $40,000 electric crossover with a 20% gross margin? Now, the reason this question was funny is because this question is indirectly saying can you guys compete with tesla because tesla already has a 20 percent gross margin so what this means is you know with ford slashing their prices they're actually hurting their margins more right and the reason they, they're, they're not up to Tesla is because they just don't have the infrastructure in their in their facilities, right? That's one thing, right? They have to change the whole layout on how they actually manufacture their cars. And then also they have supply chain issues, right? So they, they're just not on the same level as Tesla. So this is why, 
even if we head into a recession, right, no matter if we have a soft landing, a hard landing, whatever you want, right, which hopefully we do get a soft landing, of course, you know, Tesla is still poised to do absolutely better than a majority of the other competitors because it makes up a majority of the EV space and it has high profit margins. Now, I want to go ahead and talk about the federal fund rate. Earlier, you know, when we hopped into my laptop, I said, hey, I want to talk about a little bit of the macroeconomic climate. So I have this pulled up and I, I don't want to focus about you know what's going on right now obviously we know that the federal uh, reserve is hiking up rates severely high right now right these are times that we haven't seen risen up for a while especially for me you know i came in the market in 2016 and you know i i didn't see rates this high so i came during a very bullish market right i wish i came in through you know 2009 but unfortunately i was young i wasn't even in college at that time right now, what I want to show you guys with this is that, you know, often what we're seeing is individuals saying, well, a recession is not going to come because unemployment is, you know, really low, right? And that's good, right? Unemployment is good if it's low. However, one thing I do want to point out is that every time we had, you know, the uh, rates hiked up, right? It doesn't show into the unemployment like uh, data until like maybe 14 to 18 months later. And so I want to show you guys this. So around 2007, that's when we saw the peak for the federal fund rate, right? However, unemployment in 2007 really was still low. It wasn't until 2009 and then later on in 2010 where we saw unemployment high. And that's when you hit the recession uh, like area, right? That's because right now everything is pointing towards a recession, but the only thing stopping it is, well, you know, uh, unemployment is still low. However, we still are within that time frame. We just hiked up rates like maybe what, like, like eight months ago, right? We're not even at like 18 months yet. And so we could possibly see, you know, a little bit of a recession if we do see unemployment get hiked up, which, you know, is still too early to say. And this is why, you know, it's important to pay attention to the macroeconomic climate, but it's also important to look into the fundamentals, look at your competitors and look at what they're doing. No one is doing what Tesla is doing. And so that's something I just wanted to highlight with you guys. Now, real quick, if you guys are interested, there is a $80, you know, or 80% off coupon for the Push and Profit program where it's only $80 to join. So all you simply got to do is type in coupon code VDAY, hit apply, and you get to join the program for $80. It's lifetime access. You get to have access to my daily briefings and also to the Push and Profit program where I talk about what I look at when it comes to trading and investing. So definitely take advantage of that coupon code. And with that being said, guys, let me know in the comment section what you guys think about Tesla in the short term and in the long term. And also with that being said, I'll see you guys on the next video. Take care.